Seraphim righted himself on his knees, taking his children's hands for support. It's okay, he tried to say, but what came out sounded like he was attempting to clear his throat. He knelt for a minute, catching his breath, waiting for the feeling in his arms to return. You okay? Lazaro asked. His wife and children stared at him mutely, their silence more painful than anything his muscles had felt in the water. Let me breathe, Seraphin told them, and Toby was a newborn calf a few yards away, trembling and skinny and slick with water. His father helped him to his feet, but the boy's legs gave way, and he sprawled on the ground, looking up at them with bewildered eyes. Step put his hand on the boy's head. Lay still now, he told him. Let your strength come back. One of the men took off his shirt and laid it over Toby's chest. Seraphim felt his hand stinging now from the water drying and the cuts he had gotten from the baling hay. Baling hay. Pale, bloated lines crisscrossed his palms, the whitened edges of the cuts like the mouths of dead fish. He was there, all over again, four years ago, looking into Valeria's white stone face as he lay dripping in the bottom of the boat. That awful understanding his brother was dead. It was final. There was no changing it. If they had pulled him out of the water two minutes sooner, one minute, who knows? Seraphim had left in the dark morning as usual, taking Valerio along as he sometimes did. They had slipped out into the water with Valerio talking about a girl he had met on the Via Villanova, how he had walked with her all the way down to the sea and gotten up the courage to kiss her just when she bent over to pick up a piece of driftwood. I was kissing the air, he laughed, talking, talking, always talking. They had gone out in his boat with Valerio talking and returning three hours later with Valerio dead. There was no way to explain the anguish. Valerio was no more. Seraphim knelt at the riverbank, clutching his stomach, sobbing, and yet the boy Toby Hall was saved. Wonder mingled with grief, astonishment as heavy as grief, and painful too, and aston an astonishing, beautiful pain impossible to comprehend. Valerio, after four years dead, you have come back to us? The others watched uneasily. Step Hall's jaw tightened as he waited to see what would happen. It's okay, Lazaro told Seraphin. He tried to take the man by his shoulders, raise him to his feet, but Seraphin could not be moved. Everything's all right now, my friend, he told Seraphin in a gentle, coaxing way. Lazaro and Fiorenza exchanged glances with Amelia. It had been a while since they had seen Seraphin like this. Amelia had been on the verge of telling Fiorenza of her plan to take the children and leave Seraphin even though such a thing was infamante. But then Seraphin started to talk about America, and his old self came back, so she stayed with him and never mentioned the secret that she carried in her heart. Seraphin glanced over at Osvaldo at his bare feet, the wet clothes. What the devil are you doing in what the devil were you doing in that river? he said. His voice was weak, but the words made sense now. Osvaldo stepped closer to his mother, keeping his eyes alert. It's okay, Lazaro told him. Grazi adio. Nobody got hurt. Hurt? Seraphin shook his head, as if he did not understand the meaning of the word. Go get your shoes, Amelia scolded Osvaldo, the fear trembling beneath her words. Osvaldo trudged away, searching the riverbank for his shoes. Seraphin's own shoes were on his feet. He thought of this now, how if he had taken them off first, it might have been easier to swim. He could have drowned because of a pair of shoes. Step Hall was standing before him. He grasped Seraphin's hand with a powerful grip and pulled him to his feet. Step squinted into Seraphin's eyes as if straining to see something. Seraphin smiled uneasily, tried to move his hand away, but Step Hall squeezed the hand tighter in his. In his. Seraphin flinched from the pain. Niente, it's nothing, he told Step. I did nothing. He looked around helplessly. You, you saved us both. Lazaro laid a hand on Step's brother, on Step's shoulder. Finally, the man let go of Seraphin. They stood awkwardly like drunken men, unable to speak, not even knowing what it was they wanted to say. 
Step looked out at the river, went then over at his wife and the boy a long time. His feet were lead. For all his dreams, he was useless after all. He turned and called gruffly for the group to move along. He lifted his son and laid him against his shoulder like a baby. And when he started walking, his and when he started walking, his family and friends followed. The Italians fell behind. Osvaldo, barefoot and carrying his shoes in his hands, while his father stumbled forward, steering the boy with one hand laid across his neck. Seraphim squinted ahead at the dark shapes resting in his father's arms, the boy who was not Valerio. Behind them, Amelia and the girls trailed, subdued and silent, and Lazaro and his wife and the old lady back to the hayfield below the le levee, back to the sweet grass and the grazing cows and the acres of flat, silent, dusty land, away from the beautiful, merciless river.